In our today's session, we are going to learn how to implement CRUD operations in ASP.NET Core MVC application. This is the structure of our MVC project. We have already set up Entity Framework Core and we are using SQL Server as our database. If you want to go through previous videos, I'll keep playlist link in the description box. Later you can have a look. I'll quickly run and show you the user interface of this application. This is how it looks. CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update and Delete. In our today's session, we are going to see how to create, read, update and delete tutorial information. Let's quickly recap our project structure so that when we implement CRUD operations, it will be easier to understand. This is ASP.NET Core MVC project. We have implemented repository pattern. Here you can find the folder by name repository. This iTutorial repository interface has all the method signature that we are going to implement. Tutorial repository class is implementing this iTutorial repository interface. We are using SQL Server as our database and we are using Entity Framework Core in our application. If you want to know how to implement repository pattern and set up Entity Framework Core, I'll keep playlist link in the description box. There you will find all the videos. If you look at this particular piece of code, here we have a constructor and we are injecting dependency. Here dependency is tutorial DB context. If you know entity framework core, you might know that we work with database context objects whenever we want to talk to the database. The reason is DB context object knows all the necessary details regarding our model and the database table, everything. Let's implement all these methods so that we can call them as and when we did. Let's start with this add method. This add method takes a parameter which is of the type tutorial. Inside models folder, you can find tutorial model. This is a class which has three properties, ID, name and description. We are going to work against this model. Add method will simply create new record in database. Let's quickly recap this tutorial DB context. See, this tutorial DB context has got a property that is tutorials, which is of the type DB set. This property plays an important role when working with the database. The reason is DB set is a class that is mapped to database table. By default, table name is same as DB set property and it has all the necessary methods to perform CRUD operations. That's the reason to create new record, we are simply calling this tutorials, which is of the type DB set, and we are calling this add method and we are passing our model data. This add method is from DB set. Let's verify that. See, here we have this add method, which is from DB set class. Whenever we modify something in the database, it's very much important to call this save changes method. This will save changes to the database. Then we are returning tutorial. This is not mandatory just to uh, in case we want to make use of this newly added data. We are returning this tutorial. Next, we want to implement this delete operation. With this method, we want to delete specific record. How we do this is in this line, we are finding the record that exactly matches the ID of ID that is passed as a parameter. Next, if that is not null, we are calling this remove method and we are passing the data. Again, because we have deleted the record from the database table, we are calling this save changes method. Next, we are returning this deleted record just in case we want to make use of it. In this method, we want to return all the records. So we are simply returning this DB set. With this method, we want to return specific record. What we do is simply we call this, we are writing this link you query find and we are passing the ID. This will find the record whose ID matches with the ID that we are passing then that record is returned back. To update the record, we are calling this update method. We are saving the changes. That's it. We have implemented all the necessary methods that are going to help us in performing CRUD operations. 
our data access layer is ready. Now we are going to make necessary changes to the view. This is our application. I'll click on tutorial. What we see on the screen is the result of read operation. Here we are reading all the tutorial details that are available in the database. Can you see views folder here? Inside views folder, we have home, shared and tutorial. We are going to work on this tutorial module. Here we have this index.cshtml. Here we have used table to display our data. This is our existing design. I want our design to be like this. I will modify this index view and I will add a link and design it to look like a button. Let's see how it looks on the screen. See, we have a button here. Let's add two more buttons. One is one for edit and one for delete. We want those buttons in each row. So what we can do is we can add them as table data. First button is going to be edit. Next button is going to be delete. And I'll add headers for these two buttons. See, we have added add, edit and delete buttons. Now let's work on add functionality. You can even say create functionality. Adding or creating is something that we are posting some data to the server. How are we going to carry our data to the server? We need to design form and form is something that will carry our data to the server. Inside this tutorial folder, I have this create tutorial.cshtml. This is the form that will help us to create new tutorial data. I have discussed forms in detail in my previous video. I'll keep the link in the description box. You can have a look. You will understand how to create this form, what is the importance of form and many other associated things. Inside index.cshtml, we have a button and we have a separate form create tutorial. Now our task is to call this create tutorial form on a click of this button. How are we going to do that? Inside controllers, we have this tutorial controller and here we have these two methods, create tutorial. One handles HTTP get request and this action method handles HTTP post request. We are going to make use of these methods. Again, I have discussed these things in my previous video while discussing forms. So I'm not going to repeat that. Do watch that video. Again, I'll come back to this add new tutorial button. With the help of tag helpers, I'll mention controller as well as action method details. Let's verify that. I'll click on add new tutorial. See, we have a form submit. On submit, it will again come back to the same page. We have added new record. See, on each of the record, we have edit and delete buttons. Now we are going to implement these functionalities. To handle edit functionality, I'll add new view and name it as edit tutorial. Add, you can add new item and you should add razor view empty. Even edit form is almost same as create form. I'll remove these lines of code and I'll add here we have specified the model. Then we are using this hidden field to store the ID. Same, we have uh, we have label and input for name, then for description. And this time we have this submit as well as cancel button. This form is handled by tutorial controller and edit tutorial action method. Let's go ahead and create this method. We are a tutorial controller. See, we have added action methods, edit tutorial. This will handle HTTP get request and this will handle HTTP post request. We are back at index.cshtml. Here we have this edit button. We are going to specify controller and action method details. Tutorial is the controller. Edit tutorial is the action method. Here if you notice, we have passed this ASP route ID. The reason is, in case of edit functionality, we want to edit specific record. We are using this ID to identify specific record in the database and fetch that record. Let's understand this. When I click on this edit button, HTTP get method is called. What I mean to say is, on click of that edit button, 
This edit tutorial method with HTTP get attribute is called. This takes ID and uses that ID value and calls this get tutorial method. Add repositories, we have this tutorial repository. Here you can find this get tutorial method. This get tutorial method takes ID as the parameter, which is the record that matches this ID. And that data is passed to the view. Here we have submit and cancel. On submit, edit tutorial method with HTTP post attribute will be called. On cancel, it will go back to the previous page that is index.cshtml page will be called. If I click on cancel, see, I'm back at the same page. Again, I'll click on edit. I'll say, I'll submit. It has updated the data and back at the back at index.cshtml. This is edit tutorial method with HTTP post attribute. This receives modified data and the help of that with the help of ID, it fetches the record from the database with the help of get tutorial method. Then what it does is it calls this update method and once the data is updated in the database, it calls this redirect to action index. This statement calls index action method. We have this index action method which retrieves all the records from the database and display and displays it with the help of table. We are going to implement delete functionality. Deleting is very simple. We are going to have an action method delete tutorial and we will pass ID and we will call the method delete and this will delete the record from the database. Again, same after deleting, we will call redirect to action index. This will call index action method, which will display all the records in the database. We are back at index.cshtml. I'll specify controller and action method as well as ID details. I will delete this second record. I'll click on delete. It has deleted. With this, we have covered all the operations create, read, update and delete. I hope the things are clear. If you still have any question, you can ask in your comment. Thanks for your time. See you soon in the next video.